Artificial intelligence is transforming every aspect of our lives, impacting technology, business and society. If you look at technology, Europe is on par with the rest of the world. Europe is extremely well positioned on a research front. Uh, tons of very smart people, research lab, well established. But when it comes to business and the dominance of non-EE platforms, there is a need to catch up. First of all, we're in a global race for artificial intelligence and we have different values and different availability of data. You won't find anybody who can tell you seriously that uh, Europe is, is leading uh, AI. And regarding AI's societal impact, concerns remain about its use and the influence it can have. Both business makers and policy shapers have a duty to ensure that they are acting ethically and creating equal opportunity societies. If you want to develop uh, a sustainable, um, a trustable or trustworthy uh, product, uh, you have to um, be transparent on how things work. The fragmented European data landscape hampers efforts to grow EU platforms and businesses into global players. US and Asian companies can access large pools of data, informing algorithms which help enhance the services and maintain market leadership. Data in Europe is very fragmented. Moreover, the legislation around privacy and data storage do not make it easy to access large data lakes. And in order to train our algorithms, we need access to a lot of data. We need to connect makers and shapers in order to create the right products, services and policy instruments for a sovereign digital Europe. That requires regulation that enhances innovation and respects European values and rights, while creating a level playing field for all actors. The market will define a lot of these rules. But for certain principle, we need assistance from the regulators. We try to have a legal certainty like GDPR so that innovation can happen, but at the same time uh, protecting our democracy, having transparency and having the best environment for our citizens. This like, can really position Europe on that front as a leader and then therefore Europe's companies People who are, who are already have adopted that are going to have the edge in you know, getting to other market that will start asking for these things. Since Europe wishes to compete in the global race for AI, it needs to seize the opportunity to put inclusiveness and ethics at the heart of its AI strategy. Thanks for spending some time with me to discuss the topic of a strong digital Europe today. You are a member of the European Parliament with a passion and a mission for technology and digital in Europe. What are your top three priorities in order to boost digital in Europe in the coming years? Um, thank you for having me. I think it's an excellent initiative to talk about the emerging technologies and digital economy. One of my priorities uh, would be, of course, artificial intelligence because I do believe it's transforming every sector of our lives. It's data policy because I also think data uh, will be the fuel and the main value for the future economy. And, of course, an ethical and legal framework for all the new technologies that the Industry 4.0 uh, uh, will uh, have, will be using which is IoT, 5G, and uh, everything else that would be included um, in the future. The role of the regulator is to protect the citizens. Mm -hmm. However, for innovation to flourish, the innovator must be able to be on the edge sometimes. Let's talk now about the balance between innovation on the one hand and regulation on the other hand. In the US or China, uh, the balance is towards the innovator. What is the right balance for Europe? Well, in Europe we have different uh, values, I would say. We respect a lot the rights, the human rights and the rights of the individual person. 
respecting its privacy, but also to avoid any discrimination that might occur or inequalities that these technologies could cause. So I would say we might be a bit slower into developing or like allowing innovation to happen, but at the same time we are open-minded, innovation friendly. We try to have a legal certainty like GDPR so that innovation can happen, but at the same time uh, protecting our democracy, having transparency and having the best environment for our citizens. Because for us it's not just about profit, it's about uh, citizens making uh, AI or new technologies work to benefit citizens. We talked about technology as an opportunity for Europe. Let's now talk about technology as a threat. With the advent of deep tech, such as artificial intelligence, how do we make sure technology does not boost inequalities in the European job market or threaten our democracies with the spread of fake news. We've realized that uh, people's perception could be manipulated online, so we could have a threat to democracy. This is just one case scenario, but the problem we face is also um, lack of uh, freedom of choice or options or citizens that are unaware that they are being manipulated. Deep fakes could cause a huge lack of trust uh, to what we see. You can see a video and wonder if it's uh, true or not. So wanting to avoid that, we try to make sure that citizens will acquire better digital skills because this is what, would, what creates inequalities for the future and the labor market. So we want them to have digital skills, to be able to be aware of the impact and the challenges of the new technologies and I think this is the first uh, step. As opposed to the US or China, Europe is a fragmented market for entrepreneurs, a collection of countries with the specific languages, cultures, rules and regulations, be it for recruiting local talent or doing business. What are the policies that are needed so that entrepreneurs can address Europe as a single domestic market? We have progressed a lot but we still have to remove the barriers that are still there to have a level playing field for all the new companies and startups. Um, I think bankruptcy law, insolvency, tax treatment of uh, options paid to the startup employees are things that we have to address. Grant funding cross-border is also something that we managed to achieve. We removed geo-blocking, which means that you cannot be discriminated as a European citizen and pay different value of the same service if you come from a different member state. One thing that we should change is also competition law and the way we define um, the market uh, position dominance because with data possession, things are changing. If we have a harmonized environment, then we're going to have more innovation. Still, we do have uh, the need to develop tools of co-funding and taking the risk as Europe. The dominant technology companies, the GAFA from the US, the Batix from China, are eating the world, arguably, with their platforms. What does Europe need to do to preserve its technological sovereignty? First of all, we're in a global race for artificial intelligence and we have different values and different availability of data. What we have to make sure is that we will have a framework of reciprocity so whenever we allow access to European data, we will have the same access to Chinese or US data. And the second thing is a digital tax. So you will be paid for your data and you will be taxed where you're producing value and not where your company is located. This would help a lot to be able to have sovereignty and at the same time to avoid protectionism. Europe has a shortage in digital skills. The European universities struggle to create enough startups women are still vastly underrepresented in digital, in education and jobs. What are the reforms that are needed in Europe to overcome these shortcomings? I do think that uh, we can build uh, up more universities that uh, are dealing with these new technologies. InvestEU is a funding opportunity for also digital skills and uh, I think uh, Europe has realized this problem and we're doing more about that. I think it's also important because it helps us develop ecosystems for entrepreneurs, young people that want to start their own, develop their own ideas or have their own startups and making sure that it will mentor them in a way to acquire more of the skills that they actually need. It's not just digital. So sometimes you need to understand how new materials work. This can help you be more and more innovative 
and also avoid duplication. If something exists, then you don't have to develop it yourself. You just have to have access to another system and be connected to that. So I think having EAT as um, a very important tool for Europe to implement pilot projects and help build this infrastructure uh, is one of the best things we have done the last years. Eva, thank you very much for a very enlightening conversation around the topic of digital Europe today, here at the European Parliament. Thank you for having me.